Greetings, my name is Kevin Matthews and I am the tax professor. Welcome back to class. Class is still in session because the learning never stops. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, taxation of non-residents uh, of non-residents in the United States. And so um, if you have a question about whether you are resident or not, go ahead and watch the other video that's uh, that should be out there. Uh, and we'll put a link on it on this uh, video so that you can go ahead and find that very easily. Um, but say for example you go through the numbers and you're like, hey Kevin, I'm not a resident of the United States and I got to file a tax return. What do I do? Or do I have to file a tax return? Maybe I don't. I'm not subject to tax in, uh, in the United States. And this is where we kind of get into this this um, it's sort of the theoretical realm where we talk about income sourcing. Okay, so income is sourced to the state um, or nation where it is earned. Okay, so for example, say for example, I'm a, a Swedish citizen, you know, because um, my, actually my grandmother was Swedish, so I'd like to think that I have enough Sweden in my blood, you know, and all that. So I did get her eyes, so hopefully. I've got the, you know, that thing going for me. Um, but, you know, so for example, I'm from Sweden. I come here to the United States. I work for 90 days and I go back to Sweden. Do I have a tax requirement to file in the United States? And the answer is maybe. Okay. And I know, <laughs> I know that's not the answer everyone wants to hear. And, and generally, without thinking about any of the unusual rules, the answer would be yes. Okay. I come here to the United States. I work for 90 days and go back to Sweden. I'm going to have to file a tax return for those 90 days that I exist here uh, in um, in the country of the United States. And so what ends up happening is uh, because I have effectively sourced income to the United States, I have to file that tax return. Now, the the, the tax return can uh, be done and, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's not an easy tax return to go through because what ends up happening is a lot of the things that most people who file standard resident tax returns, a lot of the benefits that they get and the deductions that they get don't exist on the 1040 NR. Um, so for very, for very good example, um, you would not uh, qualify to, uh, to be able to take the standard deduction. Uh, you are forced to take the itemized deduction. Now there is an exception on that, that if you are a, a citizen of India, you do get to take the standard deduction. Um, but also another rule that we have is that if you are married, you have to file married filing separate. You cannot do a married filing joint tax return unless you're a citizen of the country of South Korea. Now, some people might go, wow, with all these rules, how do we navigate through this stuff? And the answer is that you, you, know, you have to do your research and your homework. Or, you know, forgive the short-term plug here, but you, or you hire a guy like me to do it because, you know, I've been doing these for years and I can really get people through this stuff. And so, there's a lot of things that end up having to go through this that we really want to work through. Now, I said that the answer would be maybe because there are some rules that can get people through it. So let's say, for example, instead of Sweden, maybe my country's the UK. And there's this little thing between the United States and the United Kingdom called the tax treaty. And there are certain things that say, look, if I'm coming here and I work for you know a company in the United States and I meet certain requirements, um, I can basically say that I'm, I'm, I, I, can, I can apply for a treaty waiver that I don't even have to pay taxes in, in, the, in the country where the income is sourced. So for example, maybe I work for, well, just I just want to have some fun with this. Uh, maybe I work for Rolls Royce because yeah, I love their cars. They're all wonderful cars, they're beautiful cars. And so I work for Rolls Royce and I decide I'm going to come to the United States and I want to work here for 90 days and I'm going to go back to the UK. Number one, do I have income source to the United States? Answer is yes. However, I can take a tax treaty position by filing a tax return that has the tax treaty position form attached to it that basically says, yes, in the United States, I did earn income in the United States. This is how much money I earned. Uh, however, because of tax treaty article, blah, 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 so on and so forth, I am not required to pay for this tax. Um, here's your tax return. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. So obviously, we're always polite when we talk to the tax authorities. And so, um, and I always feel like you should be because they're professionals, they understand stuff. And if you have a tax treaty position, guess what? You have a right to it. So, the, so we're all going to be professional about it. 
Um, but, but basically what ends up happening with this thing is that you, you go ahead and you get that file and you can get that, that tax taken care of. Now the pain in the butt thing about it is you still have to file a tax return. Yeah, if you earn a certain amount of income in the United States, uh, which I believe is $4,050 in the United States, you are required to file a tax return in the United States. Um, and that's, that's earned income. And if it's unearned income, it's more than $1,900 in the United States. You're required to file a tax return in the United States. And so, um, you know, it's something that you definitely want to get taken care of if, 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 you, if you have that requirement. Now, something that we'll also talk about here, um, you know, and we didn't, in the, in the other video when we talked about, you know, non-resident, the, the um, different types of visas that would uh, prevent you from becoming a resident of the United States, we will here just because I think it's very important. So if you're here in the United States and you're a student, you will have what's called an F visa. Uh, you can also have J visas, which I believe are for um, scientific professionals. Uh, so, you know, people who are, you know, um, scholars uh, will come here on J visas. So if, if you're a visiting professor, say from, you know, maybe I, maybe I teach at the University of Hong Kong, I'm coming here to the United States and I want to, uh, you know, I'm gonna do, uh, you know, a semester here as a, as a visiting uh, lecturer, um, I'll have a J-1 visa. Uh, Q visas I've actually not run across before, so I'm not even going to pretend that I know what those are. Um, but basically, if you have any of these types of visas, F visas, J visas, or Q visas, you are not going to become a resident of the United States simply because you have 183 days here. Uh, those visas are specifically exempt from the substantial presence test and will be judged as non-residents. So you will have to file a 1040NR whether you like to or not. Um, I don't even believe you can qualify for the election uh, so that you can you know, get you and your spouse to be able to file. And you wouldn't want to anyways. Usually what ends up happening is if you're here as a student or as a visiting lectern, uh, you just want to pay your taxes and go home. Okay, you don't want to deal with uh, you know a lot of the other issues that end up happening, um, especially when we talk about different types of reporting and bank account and financial asset reporting. It's better to stay non-resident, just move on. <coughs> Again. The rules that are surrounding this uh, can get very convoluted. Feel free to watch the video where we talk about uh, taxation of uh, non-residents who, who come to the United States. If you have a general question, though, that you think that the group might be able to benefit from, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment box below. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Matthews. I am the tax professor. Class is still in session because the learning never stops. I want to say thank you very much for watching this video. If you really like this video, please go ahead and hit like. Uh, if you really like the video series, please go ahead and hit subscribe. We'll be very happy to give you up updates when, this, when the new videos are coming out. If you want to reach out to me directly, you can go to my website at www.betasolutioncpa.com. Again, this, that's www.betasolutioncpa.com. And I want to say thank you very much for watching this video.